kind of didn't want to go in with that. I wanted to go in on the same level with him. So um, that's why we, we, we were building a rapport at that point. Well, I know Geraldo would disagree when he says mop the floor, right? He would he'd want he physically this is a guy, Geraldo Rivera, that challenged O. J. Simpson to a fight. Yeah. <laughs> Geraldo's got some Latin temper going. Yeah, uh, that's that's true. But I think Geraldo is also going for the whole you know, he he wants to be the voice of society or whatever when he goes in and wants to fight O. J. Simpson or wants to beat up the clan or or, you know, or jump on Charles Manson or whatever. But how could you be impartial with Charles Manson? I mean, the man was responsible for stabbing a woman, uh, a number of women, but uh, Sharon Tate was eight and a half months pregnant. Yeah, that was a horrible, horrible um, crime. The, the thing is, is Manson wasn't there for the killings. I mean, I, I think, like, if I were talking to Susan Atkins, I would be purely disgusted or... You know, Tex Watson or somebody like that. Somebody who was there. But he, he cut off uh, a drug dealer's ear. Uh, he shot another drug dealer. I mean, Charles Manson. Yeah. Is a killer. Yeah. If I can say, if I can. Publisher uh, Paul Fitzgerald, uh, go to www.thursdaymagazine.com. Paul, go ahead. Yeah, and I, that's one thing I like about uh, Ro Hurley's approach. You know, I, I've been in the journalism world internationally for a long time, and I've heard a lot of Ro's interviews. And one thing I do like about Ro, and this is a benefit of Thursday Night Magazine, is that we don't take sides. Uh, you know, she had stepped in in interviews. Just how can you talk about Charles Manson and talk about not taking sides? Well, what are you let, folks well, yeah, no, talking no, about? And she let, but she let Charles Manson talk. And he provided, um, you know, a, a, a lot of a lot of dialogue, which you get to understand who he is. And I mean, really, when it comes down to it, when you're talking to Charles Manson, I mean, we all know it. He controls the conversation. I mean, he is a mastermind at that. As much as I don't agree, well, with people him, let him, like him people let him talk because he's Charles Manson. That's right. And they want they yeah. want the interview. Except if you're Geraldo. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah, and that's what I liked about Rose's interview, and that's why I think it's a benefit, and it serves the mission of Thursday Magazine because she let him talk as much as possible. You know, you hear the words, I I've got a 15, you have a 15-year-old in your pocket. Do you know what a front man is? You know, he's talking a lot about... Well, um, even that even that right off the bat is very interesting, mm -hmm. that he would talk in, in very quickly about... Uh, you know, you must have a 15-year-old in your pocket because that's what he he wanted to be a cult leader for young, impressionable people. Uh -huh. But at the same time, I've heard Manson family members in documentaries over the weekend refer to it as a tragedy. It wasn't a tragedy. These were murders. A uh -huh. car accident is a tragedy. Uh -huh. These people that he got to kill were sick people that were losers. And when you say you can get anybody to kill, I don't believe that. Ro, your thoughts? Um, I I don't believe I agree with that. I don't believe that he can get just anybody to kill. I believe that the people were young and impressionable and such. But but he actually said something, and he said it over and over throughout the years, that he only had them for a few years. Their parents had them all their lives. Their schools had them um, throughout most of their lives. He didn't make them. You know, he didn't make who they were. I, I think that the sociopath has to be there. For these people to go out and kill. So I, I guess. No, I mean you make a point. You just said the school had them, the parents had them. How did Charles Manson get these people? The the school did them wrong. The parents didn't guide them. Okay, but just because you didn't have a mama or daddy that kissed your bum doesn't mean you should go out and kill people. I know lots of people who've been through the life of hard knocks. Oh, I. And they've responded differently. I agree. I, I, I completely agree with that, um, but I, I also... Let me back it up for the folks. Okay, this is what Charles did. First of all, you know, he told people he had the answers. He's in. This is a guy who's in his early 30s. He's been in the joint all his life, pretty much, half his life, okay? So while he's in prison, he picks up a little Scientology and whatever. Mm. So he's got a pattern. He's got a chat, right? And he's high-energy guy. So he approaches these people, and he says, I have the answers. And people, instead of doing their own thinking, like to hear it when somebody says they have the answers that they don't have. Yeah. Right. So they, they, they follow Charlie, and then he gets them into this. We've seen this with other cults, with both Jim Jones 
okay? And uh, with the uh, guys following the comet that ended up drinking Kool-Aid, too, yeah. you scare the folks the, the, under your control into thinking that there is doomsday around the corner, that there is a great apocalypse. You scare them, you cow them, and you say, there's only one way to do this because we're all going to die. You have to follow me. And the followers of Charles Manson believed that a race war was imminent, and he was going to put gas on the fire by committing grisly acts and try, trying to blame it on the Black Panthers or other black groups so that Whitey would rise up and, and there would be a race war and him and his followers would be one of the few gr groups left standing in the desert. When we come back, Charles Manson, in his own words, and Roe Hurley from Dallas, Texas, with Thursday Night Magazine, who interviewed Charles Manson and Paul Fitzgerald. And 40 years ago, Los Angeles and the world was shocked by these grisly murders. And the more we understand about this type of person, the greater armed we are to prevent another Charles Manson from returning. This is Maritime Morning. You're listening to Maritime Warning with Andrew Crystal on News 95.7. Andrew Crystal will be back in a moment with your calls. He's 95.7 time, 10.05. Now back to Andrew. 